Yoda. Welcome to Wake Up Greydown. I'm Lockie. And I'm Macy. And today's story is a new crime wave is sweeping the country in form of woolen graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We help them find it in the latest weather around the country. But first a story that will turn your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house. And before you think they may have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wacky abode was built as a tourist attraction, as well as being a comment on the state of the world. The house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof, and there's steel beams in the attic. Inside the house there are beds screwed into the ceiling, upside down wardrobes, an upside down kitchen, and even an upturned bathroom, though it's not known if anyone has tried to have a bath in it or go to the toilet. Normally, a house like this would have, have taken three weeks to build. This one took f over four months because workers kept getting confused by the strange angles of the walls. Many tourists visited, visiting the house complain of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside. We now cross over to our reporter Dylan, who is inside the house. How are you feeling, Dylan? Thanks, Matt. I'm here with the owner of the house, Henry Schwarzenegger, and I'm feeling a bit upside down too. So what made you decide to build an upside down house? Well, I decided to make an upside down house because every other house is normal, so I felt like being a bit more unique than other people. So I felt like building the upside down house. Yep. What comment do you feel the house makes on the state of the world right now? Well, I don't, I don't know because my mind is upside down down and I'm gonna have a breakdown. What are some of the challenges of living in a house where everything is upside down? Going to the toilet, um, going to bed because I sometimes I fall out and then land on a trampoline though which is all around the roof so um, I'll, sometimes I can't be bothered to get into bed so I'll just sleep on the trampoline with blankets on me trying to get food out of the um, fridge so it falls out and just makes a massive mess all over the trampoline. What do your friends think of you with an upside down house? They think I'm weird and so they sometimes stay a bit of a bit away from me because I walk on my hands sometimes and feet and sometimes I end up kicking them a couple of times, punching them by accident because they know I'm mental, got a bit of problems, yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Back to Lockie in the studio. Thanks, Dylan. Even watching that makes me feel like vomiting. Now let's go over to Xavier for a look at, stock, at the stock market. How much money are you making, Xavier? Kia ora, everyone. Let's have a look at what's fresh in the stock market today. Prices in used cooking grease have gone through the roof as oil price saw around the world. There is even some talking of a black market operating in this country run by, run by grease rustlers who are stealing used cooking oil from fish and chips shops and fast food restaurants. Some, ex some experts are saying that any valuable used cooking oil should be collected and kept in the fridge. Also going up our uh, shares in a new bacon flavoured toothpaste created by an American company tired of the refreshing minty taste. Now your breath can be pork fresh while your teeth get a dentist approved once over. That same company also makes bacon flavoured dental floss, soap, 
bacon bandages, and even bacon air f- freshener. Is there anything bacon cannot do? So there you go. Invest in oil and pork. That seems to be the advice of most brokers today. This is making me a little bit hungry. Back to you in the news desk. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Look out Harry Potter, the world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak which can hide objects by bending light waves. It has been found that light can be controlled using special tiny crystals that makes objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects such as coins disappear, but hope that it won't be long before they are hiding cars, planes and even people. People have always dreamed of making themselves invisible, one top scientist says. The possibilities are endless and we are very excited. However, since inventing the invisibility cloak, the scientists have been having trouble finding it. As soon as we put it down somewhere, it just disappears. The inventor of the cloak said, it disappears. It appears as they are having trouble finding other things too, like their lunch, which they think may be underneath the cloak. What will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak. Here is our on the spot reporter, Caitlin, with more on this story. Hello, I'm Caitlin, and with me here today is Charlotte, one of the invent, one of the scientists who invented the invisibility cloak. Hi, Charlotte, and thanks for joining us today. What made you want to invent the invisibility cloak? Well, Harry Potter is one of my favourite movies, so I thought it would be a good idea if I could have one, an invisibility cloak of one of my own. Can you show me how it works? First of all, you have to put it over your head like this, and then you'll turn... Invisible. Am I invisible? You sure are. What do you hope the cloak will be good for? Um, I think it will be good for cutting in a queue if you're in a hurry to get your groceries. Are you selling the invisibility cloak? And if you did, how much would it cost? I'm not planning on selling it, but if I was, I would make it cost about $1,000 because it took me 10 years to make it. Well, that makes things very clear. Thanks for joining us. Back to you, Lockie and Macy at the studio. Thanks, Caitlin. And now, how's this for an interesting yarn? A new wave of graffiti crime is covering the country, thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. These wool-waving criminals are covering tree branches and lampposts with small jerseys and scarves under the cover of darkness. Police say the knitted activities of the gang are illegal because their woolly crimes are being done on public property without permission. The popularity of woolen graffiti is growing and more and more public objects are being wrapped up every night. But the problem is growing, please say. And warn that if the midnight night is uncaught soon, every tree, lampost and traffic light in the country will be warmly dressed against the cold. The problem is spinning out of control. There are a close-knit group of dyed-in-the-wool criminals. We are stitching together a case, but it's not seamless. There is no real pla- pattern to the crimes. 
a police spokesman said yes today. So far, the criminal knitters have escaped arrest and continue to pull the wool over the eyes of both the public and the police. We go now to a secret location with our investigate reporter Danielle who has an exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Knitters gang. Thanks Lockie, I'm Danielle and joining me in this top secret location is a member of the Midnight Knitters, Knitters gang. Hello Julian, thank you for joining us. What led you into this dark underworld of knitted graffiti? Well, my grandma, when I was young, she taught me how to knit. And as I grew older, I got into graffiti. But I wanted to hold on to what my grandma taught me. So I combined them both into knitting graffiti. And now I can just knit. Do you see yourself as a criminal? Why not? Go around with cat guns, cause riots, people think it's actually real gunshots. Apart from trees, lampposts and traffic lights, what else would you like to graffiti? Well, me and my gang, we walk around the street and we see cabs and we see the thing saying taxi and we go, whoa! That is just off the hook. We are going to graffiti that one day. And so all y'all graffitians out there, try that. Do you have any other hobbies? Well, I like to cook and I like to write poems, but graffiti's my favorite. Okay, thank you for your time, Julian, of the Midnight Knitters Gang. Now we cross over to Isabella and Ash at the weather update. Thank you, Danielle, and good evening, New Zealand. Let's have a look at tomorrow's weather. Starting in the far north at Kaitaia, look out for some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. Moving down to Auckland, there will be a mixture of conditions and unfair conditions but those are the conditions and you'll just have to accept them. There will be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It's taking a short holiday but is expected to be back for the weekend. In Napier and Hastings the weather will sometimes be changeable and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will be happening in there. In Taranaki, a mild depression brings with it a very dull day with no highlights at all. It will be overcast and gloomy all morning, but things should cheer up by the evening, so don't worry, everything will be fine. Wellington will have another capital day. There will be no wind at all and the day conditions will be so pleasant they'll actually be extreme. In the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can expect to have a good day, meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim and reading the newspapers. But try to stay indoors as the weather will be just terrible. A real mix for Christchurch, which will have some unreasonable rainfall, some sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms and some very angry snow. And in the lower south, Dunedin will be frosty, cold and unfriendly until late morning when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everyone likes the sun. That's all from me. Remember, if it's raining outside, that's the weather for you. Good night, New Zealand. Now it's back to the news desk with May Macy and Lockie. Thanks, Isabella and Ash. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed this evening's broadcast. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next time. Until then, I'm Macy. And I'm Lockie. For a great, for wake up. Goodbye. For... Enohora.
Ladies and gentlemen. Roll the camera. Okay. okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we are featuring an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene one, take one. Take two.